Linux Mint 22 is out and in this video I'm going to give you my detailed review. All the new features, how stable is the current Wayland experience and even in which direction Mint is actually heading to. Trust me, this is going to be interesting. Okay, starting with the Cinnamon desktop. First things first, Wayland which gains support for the Clutter Polkit agent which is able to display the authentication page for running or changing settings maintained by the administrator. The Wayland session is now quite stable on Cinnamon and the developers have actually set in target uh, to make Wayland default on Cinnamon with the next major release of the desktop environment. Currently, it works fine and all the expected features work, but it's a bit weird. You get this desktop, what I should say, app in the taskbar. It completely disables the mouse and it feels like I'm dragging on the desktop whenever it comes to focus. Super annoying because it doesn't let you focus on a different app. The current workaround is only to use Alt-Tab button in order to switch among different apps. So yeah, this is a very big problem. Also, I did not find the option to record the entire screen in OBS on Wayland, although there is one in their default X11 session. And this is the reason I could not show you any video and I had to stick to screenshots. Okay, next are some features in the Cinnamon desktop. This is the version 6.2 and there are some updates. The workspace switcher now supports middle click to close the workspace. I think the animation needs a bit of an improvement. Maybe add some easing with a curve so it will look much better. Next, you can add uh, various right-click menus to the file manager and even reorder the contents within the menu according to your taste. There are options for groupings like in the sub-menus, adding separators and even disabling default stuff. So like if I turn off set as wallpaper, it reflects instantly in the file manager. VPN also has a small update. There is a lock icon now. So uh, it is shown whenever it is up and running. The corner bar applet, which is like the show desktop appearing at the bottom right corner, now adds the option to modify shift plus click to trigger different stuff. By default, shift click opens workspaces page from where you can manage the workspace. Next, the software manager launches much faster now. Everything feels instant over here. This is because of the multi-threading support. Although the first launch experience was quite slow, but this isn't the main part of the software center update. There's now a banner slideshow in the main page, just like most of the app stores and even online stores have it. Next, Mint is still maintaining dev packages, whereas Ubuntu is only shipping Snap Alternative in most of the apps on their official store. And this is actually a good thing. So I actually installed OBS on the live system for the recording, whereas the Flatpak version of OBS would have taken much more space. I mean, just look at the space difference. Next is Thunderbird, which is again a Snap exclusive now on Ubuntu, has the dev version maintained by the Linux Mint team. So there are some interesting changes within the software manager, but uh, Mint now handles packages coming from Flatpak in a very different way. By default, you can't search or install unofficial packages maintained on Flathub, but these are actually maintained by third-party individuals and not the official developer. This, however, can be enabled from the preferences page, but there's another problem with this. Such packages, after you enable, will show up, but you won't be able to see user ratings of the app. Now, this will Will surely confuse the users because that takes away the ability of the users to decide if the release is legit or not. Maybe a warning dialogue could be better but at the same time I completely understand the idea of having favorite apps in the store for easy download but if it isn't available then I think getting the app from the official site is a much much better decision. It literally takes just a few more clicks to be safe. One feature suggestion would be start including filters for searches like if I search for VLC the page looks flooded with a lot of these VLC plugins which may confuse the beginners and also the page looks less professional because of all these results having the same icon. Uh, they could also include this option for showing unofficial packages in the filter section. Next, new online accounts app replaces the previous app which moved to Libadvita and hence could not be included. The same app is there for Mate and XFC versions. And this is just beginning because you see all the GNOME apps in Linux Mint are their previous releases using GTK3 because with the Cinnamon guidelines, the GTK4 apps would be difficult to theme and maintain. But does this mean Mint users are just stuck with the older app versions? Well, no. 
because the Mint team is planning big with the release of their own set of apps as an alternative with better theming support. I really love how everything is instant and snappy in theming part because of GDK3 and even better with the new apps. Cinnamon will truly become an independent desktop not having to rely on GNOME for their apps. Although they will probably create forks of the existing apps and add customized features and they don't want to create just Cinnamon apps here but Linux apps even for other distros and desktop environments facing similar problems with the switch to GDK4, for example XFC, uh, Mate and more. Honestly, I think they should have seen this coming and it's not today that GDK4 uh, got released but with GNOME 40 back in 2021 and now we are already halfway through 2024 so it's a bit late to act so the users are just stuck with older software as of now and I don't really think they will be able to produce so many apps uh, in just one go even in the next release. There's a new Matrix client shipped by default. It's a web app which links to Element. You see Firefox even in the title bar when you launch it. The interface looks very similar to professional apps like Teams. I still remember the days when I was in school and uh, it was during COVID. The primary way of teaching was through Microsoft Teams. Okay, next, the Sticky Notes app can now be called from the terminal. This means you can easily con configure them with key bindings. Also, the default position of the sticky notes are now configurable. Text editors can duplicate uh, selected text with Control shift d I think the shortcut could have been Control d like we have on Android Studio, but the, that shortcut is already taken by delete over here, so not possible. Time shift now displays a confirmation dialog when trying to delete a snapshot, and then we have some more changes. You probably already know that Linux Mint is now based on the latest LTS release of Ubuntu 24.04, which means security updates will be released until 2029. But that also means it comes with what Ubuntu has done with their distro, starting with Pipewire, which is now default, as that is what Ubuntu uses. In the audio part, I noticed something weird, so you have all these options right to enable system sounds for minimize, maximize, app launch, close and more. The weird thing is the system sound for snapping which plays recursively when you resize windows. I think it should play when the user lifts their right click on their mouse and also they should apply some more snappier sound like in their app uh, minimize or maximize sounds, they are much better and these sounds actually don't go well with those. Okay, next is the kernel on this, which is the Linux kernel 6.8. Now, if you search for the end of life for this kernel, it actually has already reached end of life. Now, you might wonder why is the latest release of Linux Mint shipping an end of life kernel? Well, if you check the latest LTS release of Ubuntu, the version 24.04, they also actually ship the same kernel version. Now, someone asked this question in Ubuntu discourse and many confirmed that upstream kernel developers aren't supporting kernel.org's kernel 6.8 anymore. Whereas the Ubuntu's kernel, which isn't the stock kernel taken from there, but a recompiled version is and will be supported by Canonical for their LTS release. In simple terms, the stock kernel, which is 6.8, has reached EOL on 30th of May 2024, whereas the recompiled kernel of the same version released by Ubuntu is still supported by Canonical for the next five years. So don't worry. Next, there are some significant enhancements and optimizations in installation. Pre-installed packages for languages other than English and the one you select are removed by the end of the installation. This was not optimized in the previous Linux Mint release. The removal of these packages in Linux Mint 22 saves a significant amount of disk space post installation. If you're connected to the internet during installation, language packs for your selected languages are downloaded. And and last but not the least, there are some new set of wallpapers on Linux Mint. Pretty cool. Okay, so that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Do like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Also, do check the description below for the latest features posted by Linux Mint in the official site. You can also go there and read the entire article in details.